people, I need a mission, but how the heck do I do all this stuff? And I've definitely learned some things over the last three years doing this that are, I think, kind of my own take on what makes a good immersive video. Um, and I think at every level of production, pre-production, production, and post-production, and even distribution, I bring that into my, my mission back into it. How am I going to do pre-production? What's my mission? What am I trying to accomplish? Um, it isn't just like cut and paste. It really isn't. So one of the things that we did from doing these workshops is we put together kind of this over, overview image of the workflow process. And being an editor for many, many years, I know how obsessed we are with workflows. Because we want to know how long am I going to be doing this? And at what point in the process am I when I can see the light at the end of the tunnel? So I will talk about each one of these things moving forward in as much depth as we have time to do. So the one question that I, I always get with clients and production partners is, well, I mean, we need to like make this like good for 360 video, right? Yeah, exactly. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this music video and we're gonna put the guitar player there, we're gonna put the drummer there, and the bass player there. <laughs> so you're like, oh, you can look around and see a bunch of stuff. Like, that is good for an experiment when you first get the camera to see like, okay, what can I do with it? But it's not really a good use of immersion. That's just saying, oh look, I can put things around me. And I think, I tend to think because we see a lot of that, we tend to think like, okay, well what's the point of 360 video? Yeah, I can look around now, but couldn't you just put all that stuff in front of me so I didn't have to do that? <laughs> what do you, so the real question is, what do you want your audience to feel? What kind of change do you want to inspire? Do you want to inspire them to act differently or think differently? And that applies, you know, pretty much every marketing company ever. That's what they're trying to do. And people are calling VR the empathy machine. And it's because in film we don't break the fourth wall, unless we're Ferris Bueller. But in this medium, you want to, because we feel like we're really there. And that's what we do to each other. We like look at each other when we talk. Hi. Thanks for being here. What do you think? And there was an experience that I watched. I can't remember what it was. I was in New York at the Samsung headquarters. They had some gear VRs set out there. And I put on a headset and I sat down and it was experience. And it's like kids were playing kickball. And they were kind of far away. And I'm like, oh, look, I'm outside. I don't know what country I'm in. I'm not sure. And all of a sudden, the ball came up to me. And I was like, interesting. And then the kid ran up to the ball and then looked up at me. I'm like, oh, holy crap, that. Really just, that was incredible. Um, how does the environment play a role? Huge. If VR, or if 360 video and VR are good at anything, it's creating a sense of place, making you feel like you're really there. Where? A pl place building is important, and the Bug Project is a really good example of creating that sense that you are somewhere else and that you're different. How am I different? Well, in bug VR, I'm different because I'm little, or the bugs are big. More likely that I'm little. Are you creating a new perspective? And that bug VR is a good example of new perspective. Now, with the Wildlife Project, we were trying to create connection. We were trying to create connection between a concept that a lot of people, when we do, when we go around the country, I would say like 60 to 70 percent of the kids in the classrooms we go to don't even know what national parks are. So we're trying to connect, to create a connection, a physical connection with, or emotional connection with what a national park is. So one of the big questions that, um, one of the slides we added to this one, because we get this question a lot, and until recently I didn't really have a lot to say about it, um, because I had always done the writing for our projects. Um, even projects that I work on with Mike, which I work a lot of, on a lot of projects with Mike, my usual my co-teacher in these workshops. Um, so writing for VR, what do you have to think about? Well, one of, the, one of the projects we worked on recently was with PBS, and we used a, a writer from PBS was working with us, and she's like, what things do I need to know for VR? And I was like, well, I mean, you know, it's just a voiceover, so write it and I'll make it work. And after we got the script, we like ended up taking out a lot of the script and rewriting it because it wasn't inviting people. So one of the things that I say that is if a TV screen was a window, then immersive media is a door. We want to invite people to interact, invite people to act like they're really there. And I'll go into that a little more. 
What is the role of the viewer, like we talked about earlier, the camera? The camera is a character. The camera is you. So how does that play into things? Um, there is a new uh, project on the, uh, the app stores called uh, Speak of the Devil. Um, it's made by a company here in Los Angeles called Lifesail VR. We had it at an immersive media festival that we just had last week in North Carolina. And it is basically a narrative horror piece that is interactive and treats the camera as a viewer. It addresses you. Oh, hey, glad to see you out here. And it's really incredible. Um, I like to tell people that 360 film production is much more like theater production because you're doing a lot more with blocking and timing and pacing of your talent and your camera and things like that right in the scene. You're not doing a lot of that in post. But I would actually say it's way more like a theme park ride. I would tell you, I can guarantee you right now, if, the net, if your project that you're thinking about doing in 360, you can go, what would it be, how would it be if it was a theme park ride? That will guide you to what your next step is in this medium. Because theme parks have been doing it for so many years, making experiences that are immersive, that take you places, that make you feel like you're moving around and seeing things and hearing things. And so it's, it's a, every, every, I like to say every VR experience is a theme park ride, just in a headset. 